Mitosis can happen after the cell finishes interphase, which is basically when it is replicating its DNA and preparing to divide. When this is done, mitosis occurs and scientists have divided mitosis into several stages to make it easier to talk about. It's called PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Prophase is when chromosomes start to appear like this, and the nuclear envelope around them begins to disintegrate. These centrioles over here, which are microtubules, or tube-like structures, begin to form asters. These centrioles are extremely important for when it comes to actually dividing these chromosomes. The next step is called metaphase, and this is when chromosomes line up at the metaphase plate. The microtubules from the centrioles form what is called the mitotic spindle, so-called for what it looks like. The spindle attaches to the chromosomes at the kinetic core proteins in the very center of the chromosomes. The center is also called the centromere. In other words, the microtubules attach to the chromosomes by the kinetic cores at the centromeres. Alright, so now that the microtubules have latched onto each one of the chromosomes, they start to pull each chromatid, which is like each half of the chromosome apart. Now the chromosomes look like this and start to gravitate towards the opposite poles. It can be kind of confusing how both one chromatid can be called a chromosome, and both chromatids together can also be called a chromosome. That's one important thing that you'll have to be good at distinguishing because it can be a test question. So just as a brief explanation, when you see the DNA and the cell during interphase, which has not replicated yet, they're still chromosomes. But even after DNA replication, when the chromatids have duplicated, this whole structure is called a chromosome as well. Anyways, back to mitosis. So we just said that anaphase is when the sister chromatids are being pulled apart from each other. The last part is called telophase, in which nuclear envelopes start to surround the separated chromosomes, and the two cells sort of cleave away from one another. This process of dividing the cytoplasm of the cells is called cytokinesis. So those are the basics of mitosis, and now let's move on to binary fission. Binary fission is extremely similar to mitosis, but it's an asexual form of reproduction, meaning that organisms can reproduce this way without having to mate with others. Binary fission is commonly seen in bacteria. So the parent cell is here, and the cell begins the process by getting longer and replicating its DNA. Soon after, the cell starts to divide when it's ready, while the cell membrane envelopes around the new genetic material like this. When it's all said and done, the cells separate. Easy, right? Okay guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. I hope you liked it and see you in the next video.